<laughs> oh my god. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> what happens if you fall asleep on autopilot? What we're gonna do is I've turned autopilot on and basically every kind of 30 seconds or so you get a notification that pops up just here and it tells you to nudge the wheel and that confirms that you're still around. So there, apply slight turning force to steering wheel. So then I do this and then that counts as light force. So by default, when you're driving, you should just be driving like this, kind of always having your, your hands on the steering wheel. So today we're gonna to ignore those little steering wheel notifications as if we were asleep or not paying attention at the wheel and we'll see what the car does. Right, should be able to engage autopilot in a second. Yes, we can. So I'm gonna lower the speed way down just to give us as much time as possible. There's currently no one around as well. So on screen right now, from the moment at which I stopped touching the steering wheel last, Okay, I just wanted to see what would happen there. Auto steer was limited. Oh, it slowed us right down because of him. And now it started beeping. You can see that the, uh, the notification's got red hands. It's slowing us down. It's whacked our hazards on now. And it has took us to a complete stop. And we are just in the middle of the road. There is no cars around, which is great. So it says, auto steer unavailable for the rest of this drive. Hold steering wheel to drive manually. So let's find out how I turn this off. So if I nudge the wheel, yeah, that's stopped everything. So we're still in drive, but now we can't use autopilot. So the little steering wheel to say that we can turn it on isn't there anymore. And if I try and do it, it just says auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive. So while there's no cars anywhere, let's see what counts as resetting that. So is it just pressing this? That puts us into park. And now if I start driving again, let's see if we can turn on autopilot. Yes, we can. That's literally it. I mean, we didn't even move. It didn't give us like a timeout or anything. And now autopilot is back on again and we are hurtling towards this junction. <laughs> So that was really quick, actually. I didn't expect everything to kick off so fast, to be honest. All right, we're gonna repeat the test again. Um, I'm gonna lower my speed down, providing there's no one nearby. There's a cyclist coming. Is the cyclist gonna show up on the little map? It's terribly exciting. No, no, he, he didn't show up. So I'm lowering down to 30, um, and you can see that this pops up first, then it starts flashing with blue. You can see if I was to move the speed, that doesn't count. I have to specifically nudge the steering wheel. If I was to put an indicator on, that also isn't good enough. What they want is me to nudge the steering wheel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and nudge the steering wheel because I don't want it to break down while we're on the middle of a train track. <laughs> but let's turn it back on again. Sticking at 30 miles an hour, even though the speed limit's 60. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, if I click this, it brings it back up to the speed limit. So you can see that we're starting to speed up again. But if I lower it with these little dials, I can set to go at a specific speed. All right, we're in a nice straight road again. It should start beeping at us in a second. These hands have just turned red. It's beeping. Still nothing. It's still driving for us. Hold auto steer. And it's bringing us to a standstill. Indicators are on once again. And we've stopped. I'm gonna continue driving and we're gonna turn around. Now I do also wanna see what happens when we get to a junction because right now autopilot doesn't do junctions, but we just need to make sure we can find a really quiet junction and make sure that we're going at a slow enough speed to actually do that. Up ahead, there is currently a train crossing. So the road is barriered up. So I'm gonna turn. Auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive. Ah, that's just because of our test. So let's just come to a harsh stop, put it into park. Sorry, cameraman Becky. <laughs> And now we'll set off as soon as autopilot comes back on. There we go, we've engaged it. So I just wanna see what autopilot does here with the train. Right now we are accelerating towards those cars. So I'm sure we will stop, but I'll, I'll get ready to brake just in case. There we go, it started to brake from a really good distance actually as well. So let's find out, does it still kick off at us if we're completely stationary? So we're coming to a stop. Um, we are now, yeah, it does. So if I nudge the wheel, we should have reset it. But in my experience, when you are stationary but in autopilot, which you can see by, by this being blue and these blue lanes, you don't get the notifications to nudge the wheel. However, a couple of days ago, we were sat exactly the same like this in the same place, but for some reason, it just randomly kicked off at us with no warning. So it'd be interesting to see if we can get it to do that again today, which involves us just sitting here and, and waiting for it to maybe do something. 
Okay, the barriers are opening, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let the car do everything. The Duke in front has moved forward. Press accelerator pedal to resume cruise control. Right. So that was strange. I've never actually seen it do that before. Every other time we've been there and sat on autopilot, it's just started moving for me. But this time, I guess we were there long enough that it wanted some confirmation that we were still about. Apply slight turning force to the wheel. Let's just ignore that. So this starts flashing very quickly just to get your attention. The car slowed down uh, because of that juke, but now we're accelerating again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and nudge the wheel just because there is a lorry behind us and I don't wanna confuse him. Um, let's see if we can get around this corner safely or if auto steer is gonna limit. Yeah, auto steer limited. So that's one of the most confusing things about the EU regulations. Basically, there's a rule that the wheel can't turn itself a certain distance. So sharp corners, it will potentially just cut out, which seems less safe than just letting it go around the corner. I really don't understand the logic there at all. Anyway, we're back in autopilot. We've got some cones coming up. Will the cones show up on the map? There they are. I love it when things show up on the map. This guy's pulling into the right. So we're slowing down very nicely. We're gonna ignore that notification, and now we're speeding back up. So it's set to go to 60, so let's see how long it actually takes to get to 60. It's accelerating a lot slower than the car can accelerate, which I guess is good. Oh, it kicked off at us a lot sooner that time, which is interesting. Right, it's slowing us down. So when that screen comes up, nudging the wheel is not sufficient. You have to actually just take over and start driving again. And now autopilot is disabled once again, so we're gonna have to stop when we can. Oh, we have some horses. I have never gone past horses in the Tesla before. Right, they've nodded me forward. I just wanna see what shows up on the map. Do they show up as people? Do they show up as horses? They show up as little people. There's just a little person for a second. I would love in a future software update for them to add pictures of horses to the little map. That would make me incredibly happy. Okay, we're in a very small residential area, but it is actually letting us use autopilot. Whoa, slow down, bloody Nora, calm. It's getting us very close. I think we just clipped the curb for a second there. It is going way too quick. Jesus Christ. What was that about? So that is a problem with current autopilot is that it just tries to go at whatever the speed limit is in the area that you're in. So obviously the speed limit's 30 here, but you shouldn't really be going 30 because of how tight all of the corners are and how narrow the road is. So you have to reduce the speed with the little buttons. Right, autopilot can turn on. Um, let's get that decreased as quickly as possible and we'll just see how it gets on. So I've set it to a maximum of uh, 15 miles an hour and I think it's just gonna stop. Chill out. It's all right. Hey, it's. <laughs> it did not like that little Fiat Panda. <laughs> right, that was the quickest I've seen it kick off. So I, I knew it would stop there because it, it thought that that car was in the middle of the road and it's not currently smart enough to drive around it. But I didn't think it would panic quite as quickly as it did. This is a good little road for testing autopilot. I reckon we, uh, I think we continue going. Right, we're gonna turn autopilot on in this tricky little spot as soon as we're able to. And it's now, again. slow down, slow down, slow down! <laughs> okay, this is where it curbed me before. I managed to slow it down fast enough this time. <laughs> uh, I'd say we're probably a bit too close to this side at the minute, but I guess that's better than being on the curb. Ooh. Oh my god, it's dest it really wants to get us on that curb. Right, I think it's time we move on from this tight little residential estate before I completely ruin my aero wheels. Right, I want to see if we can get autopilot to do something on this roundabout. I'm ready to take over. All right, that was fine. It's never gonna take us anywhere other than straight on. What about here? Ooh! Yeah, autopilot currently isn't meant to do roundabouts, but that's what happens if you try and take it over a roundabout without disengaging autopilot. Basically, it looks like it will always just go as left as it is able to. Autopilot cannot currently see traffic lights, so I obviously have to stop here. They've turned green so we can head over. This is single lane though, so I'm gonna activate autopilot, slow it right down, and hope that it puts me in the right lane rather than right in front of that vehicle. It did, yeah, it, it did that all right. That was all good. Obviously I had to slow it down. I would not have liked to have done that when we were going 60 miles an hour. <laughs> We've got a tight corner here. How's autopilot gonna get on? I think auto steer is gonna limit. Yeah, it did. The auto steer limiting is 
rubbish because autopilot can do that corner but for some reason the EU doesn't want to let it do it so you see this is a 50 road but if we take a look at the Tesla it thinks it's a 60 road so that just shows that it isn't accurate a hundred percent of the time and you definitely can't just leave it to autopilot to decide what speed to go because if I turn autopilot on now it's gonna start accelerating until it gets to 60 miles an hour. Let's see how quick it takes to change to what the speed limit is. So we are now in the 30 zone, still says it's 60. Right, it says it's 40. So that's another example of autopilot not being accurate there. Right, this time it's stuck to 40, the exact speed limit. Right, we're approaching another 30. So let's see how long it takes to update. We are officially in the 30 now and there we go, it is just changed to 30. So more or less all the time, it is totally accurate. Right, this is quite a built up area with lots of cars parked on either side. So I would say it's probably a nice opportunity to test autopilot as soon as we can. Okay, we can turn it on now. Everything's good so far. We got very close to that van there. And it's, I, 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 it feels like it's wanting to put me a bit close to those guys as well. Right, I'm gonna turn autopilot back on. And it's steering us in at a very strong angle. And now it's off again. So we can go through these traffic lights. I'm ready to take over. It's telling me to apply. And now we carry on. So if I move this, we can change the distance that we want to be from the car in front. So I've changed it to three. And you can see that that van is now getting a little bit further ahead. So this is a 30 road, but 30 does feel very slow in this area. But if I tried to set it to go faster than 30, um, you can see the auto steer is limited to the speed limit in this area. Now that's not how it works on the motorway. On the motorway, you could set it to 80 and it would go up to 80. Um, we're gonna see how he gets on with the van moving out of the way. He got on fine. Now he's accelerating back up to 30. Let's see if this speed limit sign thinks that we're going exactly 30. Uh, it doesn't, it thinks that we're going 29. Which is more accurate, that sign or the Tesla? I don't know. Oh, no road markings ahead, okay. This will be interesting then. I'm, I'm very ready to take over. I'm just gonna keep nudging the wheel. Uh, all right, so far it is combating this all perfectly. I think it made it through that little no road markings area with absolutely no problems at all. Oh, another tricky little area with poor road markings, but it got around it perfectly fine. Once again, this sign up ahead thinks that we're going 29 miles an hour. Oh, Becky, there's a cyclist. Are we gonna see him? Come on, cyclist, cyclist. We Yay! saw a cyclist! <laughs> oh, this is tight. Ooh. <laughs> that was scary. The car there, it really slowed me down. Um, you can, basically, the car was just parked ever so slightly on the road, and with the guy so close behind me, I needed to take over just in case, because I think our car was gonna slam the brakes on there. So I'm not in autopilot at the minute, but you can see these cars here. If I was in autopilot, our car would just park behind because they think that those cars are on the road. And I don't think autopilot is really ever going to be able to know when to pull out because they, that's just such a human thing. And now we'll turn autopilot back on. This time, the Tesla knows that this is a 50 road. You can see that it's, uh, it says that we are currently on 50. Right, we're coming into a 30. Is it going to reduce our speed when we're on autopilot? Definitely not quick enough, so I'm going to go ahead and, and take over there because I don't want to get a speeding ticket. So I think what you have to do is you have to click here when you're in autopilot and that reduces your speed. But obviously you want it to be kind of faster and more automatic than that. Although to be fair, we're seeing all this, but we're currently doing extreme tests that autopilot isn't currently designed for. Autopilot at the minute is perfect for motorway driving. Whereas at the moment, we're just kind of seeing what we can do with it and what it can get away with. It's just testing purposes. When I'm not recording, I wouldn't be using autopilot for this kind of driving at all. Right, this might be our opportunity to try autopilot on junctions. So I can't engage autopilot until we get to these little lanes. Right, I can do it. Turn the speed as slow as we can, and now we're just gonna head forwards onto the junction. We're going up. Right, brilliant. Okay, oh my God. <laughs> right, well, didn't go great that, I'll be honest. We clipped both wheels on the curb. So I reckon we probably call that experiment there. And uh, Becky and I are going to go to Tesco's and do our grocery shopping. And uh, hopefully there's not a giant hole in both my wheels now. So thanks for watching. That is what would happen if you just left autopilot on and fell asleep. It would not be good. Your car will beep at you. It'll stop. You'll mess up your wheels. <laughs> But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please do click that like and subscribe button. We upload at the moment every Wednesday and Saturday. If you've got any other Tesla-related content that you'd like to see me do, then let me know in the comments down below. All right, I'll see you later.